The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hello, and help me welcome Paula Johnson. Paula, welcome to People's View. And I, uh, now that you're deciding to expand your political <laughs> influence here in Nashua, I mean, being on the board of, elect of uh, education wasn't enough. Now you're going after the uh, alderman, too. Well, thank you, Carl, for inviting me on your program uh -huh. today. Let me give you a little brief history of myself. Okay. In 2000, in 1999, I ran for the board of education. Mm -hmm. I won in 2000. I was sworn in to be mm -hmm. on the Board of Education. And in 2001, I figured I'd venture out and run for Board of Aldermen to become an alderman at large. And the wonderful people of Nashua allowed me to move over mm -hmm. to become an alderman at large. And from 2002 to 2005, I sat on the Board of Aldermen as an alderman at large. In 2003, if I promised my husband I wouldn't run for anything anymore, <laughs> people asked me to run for mayor, uh -huh. and I did not make it. Uh -huh. And people would say to me, how are you going to go back and sit in your chamber where well, you're lost? I said, I go in there, and I continue what I was doing before. Right. It's just that people didn't want me to move. Right. And then I said to my husband I wasn't going to run in again. And in 2004, I was asked to run for state rep, so I became an honorable. And from 2005, 2006, I was a state rep. Now people say to me, what's going to happen here? And I said, well, if the good people of Nashua decide that they'd like to see me in the automatic chamber doing the people's business, trying to rein in all the spending and get some sanity back mm -hmm. into the city, they'll let me go. I said, and I will leave when I get sworn in to be an alderman at large. My resignation letter will be as soon as I take the oath of office. And I take the oath, oath of office very seriously. And then there will be an open position. If, in fact, the good people of Nashua do not want me to move, I don't lose. I'm not a loser. Uh -huh. I still remain on the Board of Education. So I'm in a winning position no matter how you look at it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just very grateful to the people of Nashua that have allowed me. This is 20 years ago exactly that I did the same thing. I got this history of 20 years when I ran for the Board of Ed again, and 20 years now, that they've allowed me to move to a different position because they felt that they could trust me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think it's a trust issue. It is, yeah. And I think what's going on in the city right now between the Board of Ed and the Board of Aldermen um, I don't know if people are fed up enough, mm -hmm. but my signs out there, I've got those orange signs that says, have you had enough yeah. with a question mark? There's a lot of questions out there. Exactly. And everybody I've spoken to mm -hmm. have been wonderful out there. Whether they like me to move or they don't, everybody's been wonderful and very kind And when I'm speaking with them. So well, I appreciate that. I think that's something that, that we have to put into the administration, though. Uh, they're not as kind to people who disagree with them. Well, there's a lot of people out there, yeah. elected people on um, both boards that are not very happy. Um, they seem to feel that if citizens are speaking, it's okay to be rude to them in the middle mm -hmm. of them speaking. Mm -hmm. I don't feel that's right. No. Whether I like that constituent or not, or they like me, I always try to be polite because of the fact that um, I work for them. I mm -hmm. work for the students. I work for the taxpayers. And I always felt that way even when I, the last times I was on the board too. So this is the comeback of career. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna be 68 next month. Uh, I don't plan on this to be my, my retirement, I don't know. But I feel that the city needs me. I think you're right. I think people need, people uh, uh, governing our political area uh, that are polite, uh, that are direct, and that they want to get things done. They know what has to be done. Well, there's a lot that has to be done, and I brought a couple of little notes here that in case people don't realize that 
Nashville won't be returning $5.2 million surplus to the taxpayers. I think people really have to understand this. Our tax rate has been going up every year. We have projects on top of projects. We bond our roads. Um, mm -hmm. We bond everything. But it said this was back on the 15th of September. Nashua officials on Tuesday reallocated about 5.2 in sub surplus to various projects and expenditures. Projects. And so I just want to give people an idea what is, was said. Um, let's see here. Um, Alderman Ben Clement said escrow requests are appropriate. My view is that the uh, benefit of spending this money, spending this money, which is our money, in the various ways in which they are proposed helps various people across the city. Various interests. Interests, said Clemens. Whose interest? Is it my interest? <laughs> Is it your interest, Carl? We'd like to see some tax relief. And what about people who maybe have lost their jobs or got a reduction in pay? Mm -hmm. um, and it's more beneficial for us to spend this money this way because we already collected it from taxpayers. Oh, well, right. that's right. You collect it and you can't give it back. And to give it back to them only to ask for it later. Well, why do you have to ask for it later? <laughs> you don't have to ask for, us, for it later. Well. What is this so important? With inflation being on, um, being the way it is, yes, we know inflation is, having it been more expensive, have, it's better use of funds, it's better management of the money, he said, of the escrow. Well, I have to thank Alderman Lou and Alderman Jetty, although he's not my pick, my Alderman, but at least two people with common sense on this. Um, 50000 is to fund a new design for West Pearl Street. Is that important right now, people? Huh. West Pearl Street has been, hand has been working well for us all these years. Right. Why change it? 105000 for a mill yard study. What do we need to study with the mill yard? All this money. 25000 for affordable housing study. Okay, I can handle that. 25000 for affordable housing. That's worthwhile. 12000 for building and grounds maintenance. Don't we have people work for the city? They're, they're parks <laughs> and recs. We can't have parks and recs come in to f fix our grounds and buildings. $7,400 for parking interns. What's a parking intern? I know someone's going to come back and attack me on this. I'm waiting for Facebook. Uh -huh. Because one person from my board and one person from the board of aldermen really went after me on Facebook this week. I gotta say thank you to them. I don't okay. know. <laughs> you know? A hundred thousand for police overtime. Okay, we need our police. Um, I don't know why we're paying so much in overtime, maybe because we aren't able to find anybody, but I back the blue. Seventy five thousand for infrastructure improvement. What are we improving now on infrastructure? We we're, we're bonding our roads. They should at least make uh, some kind of you know, output to tell people what this really means that you know. um, but there's more. Aside from the three million being put aside for vehicle equipment, some of the remaining surplus funds will be used for the following. So we already have surplus funds. So now they're taking five point two. We already have three million. Thirty thousand to create a disc golf course. I guess that's at Roby Park. Oh, that is. I don't play golf. <laughs> One hundred fifty thousand for a contribution for new budgeting and planning software. Well, I hope it does planning better than we got right now. Oh, yeah. 200000 to fund school district legal payment, 150 to replace the roof of Stonehouse and Greeley Park. Well, I know about the legal. We're not, we can't get into that one. It's 57000 for citywide playground improvements. I remember when Bernie Streeter was the mayor, we had to do the same thing because we never kept up with it. And then yeah. we had half a million dollars mm -hmm. that we put in there. And That's always a problem. It's playing catch up at, right. when they're not doing a reasonable job of doing it. Why aren't we as doing you go it? Along. Right. We should have it on right. a maintenance plan. Right. And 127000 to improve local uh, ball fields. Oh, I hope it's local. You know, um, these are several items on it uh, that are very critical to the city, said Alderman Dow. Everything's critical to him. But, you know, Alderman approved 75000 surplus to initiate a study to determine the future use of Elm Street Middle School, which will close once the newly um, school opens. I thought that school building belonged 
to the school district. Mm -hmm. And why are we jumping <clears throat> ahead for 75000 to figure out what we're going to do with that building when it is it's still occupied? So again, surplus money. Why isn't 75000 in surplus money coming back to we the people? Mm -hmm. We the people who own City Hall. We the people who own the health department. We the people who own the schools. We the people who own all this. And I don't know if people have been at City Hall at all. Oh. Well, what, what, what would we find at City Hall? Bulletproof glass. So if you go to pay your taxes, and oh, I did no. it in July, I'm looking at the window and I'm going, knock, knock, knock. And I said to them, is this bulletproof? Yep. I said, even banks don't have bulletproof. They have little plexiglass now. The tax collector, the assessor's office, and also motor vehicles. Trying to scare you into paying money. Huh? I guess so. And... And then if you go to the mayor's office, yeah. you got to ring the doorbell. Oh, really? To get in there. And then they they kind of talk to you through the intercom. Wait a second. I own his office, too. <laughs> we the people have no access, really, anymore. And it's, it's really sad that people have to. And even the city clerk's office. City clerk's office is behind oh. um, bulletproof glass. Uh, it's just amazing. Well, that's one of the reasons I uh, made the comment earlier about uh, we ought to uh, have a little bit more friendly atmosphere there. When you are uh, call the police because they're not uh, happy with ways, you know, one of the people, one of their uh, constituents, if you will, uh, comes in and tries to get some information. Uh, the thing with Lori Ortolano bothers me. Uh, you can't just uh, call uh, the police in and say she's causing a, you know, trouble. She wasn't causing trouble. She was trying to get an answer to something. And uh, I think jumping to that, that's overdoing it. They, somebody, the, the, the administration should have people who are, can deal with people who are not happy, if you will, because they need, they, they need to be heard. Well, the question is, is it not happy or is it that um, open and transparent government it's, is not well, there? That's, yeah, that's right. That's, that's what it's all about. Definitely. You see it at the State House. You see it down in Washington. And this country is built on we the people, mm -hmm. not we the elected officials that you work for us, citizen. Right. But no, it's the elected officials that work for the citizens. And we kind of, you know, when I first ran for a board of ed and many years ago, I said to people, you know, we're like bears sleeping in the woods. All of a sudden we wake up and now everything has changed and everything's different. And what has changed is our freedom is being chipped away. Yeah. Little by little by little by little by little. If somebody wants to wear a mask, go ahead, wear the mask. If somebody can't wear a mask because of medical reasons, how dare you attack them, mm -hmm. continuously attack them because of medical reasons, mm -hmm. and then throw in their face that, I'll bet you you wear it at your job. Well, people's medical and people's jobs, is, it's, that's your personal life. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking for people's personal lives. And even if you're board members, there are some things that have to be kept personal. And mm -hmm. so when you start invading on people's rights and you kind of get in people's faces, you know, we have this three, six foot rule, right. which I never got into anybody's face anyway, no. because I didn't feel it was right to get into their space. Now we're invading. And this is overreach of government. And I don't feel that government was never there to overreach on us. We the people control our government, not the government control us. And since this whole thing with the pandemic, COVID-19, we have seen the overreach. We have seen people get more and more locked down in their cities, their states, their countries, mm -hmm. and their rights being taken away. And people now are starting to uprise and saying, no, 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 no. You work for us. Right. And that's the way it has to be. I just want to put this up for the viewers. And this says, keep Nashua police independent from Nashua politics. Vote no. Right. I think this is very important because I truly believe this mayor and probably some members on the board of Alderman are overreaching on this. Mm -hmm. The reason you keep us separate is because you don't want, if there's a problem, you have independent boards. They're not the buddies. And the mayor, I went to the meeting last Thursday night, and the mayor keeps saying diversity, diversity, diversity. We need women. We need this. And 
how come when nominations were open, he has never appointed anybody? <laughs> and I said to him very clearly last week, Mayor, I am a woman. I am a woman and I am a woman. <laughs> and I have no desire to be a police commissioner. Maybe women don't want to be police commissioners. Yeah. But the bottom line is that you don't need to change this because you want women on the board. You search them out. When it's time to appoint, let them know. I, uh, well, I was also wondering why we don't elect them. Well, that's a good point also. I mean, um, the other two uh, uh, administrative groups have an election for their commissioners. You know, I don't have a problem how they're um, appointing them now. And I don't, I, when I, if, if the board of uh, police commissioners and everybody sat down and said, you know what, maybe this is a fair way people mm. to run. But I don't remember this ever being really discussed. This kind of was right. like, let's get this out, boom. And my neighbors, I asked my neighbors, why did you sign it? And what they told me, the mayor said that. And I said, that's not the what it's supposed to be. And we're not electing them. It's a sad thing. But I happened to meet the mayor when I went around the corner, and he was knocking on my neighbor's doors. If I knew he was knocking on that, because I confronted him with it, I said to mayor, you out here getting signatures for your petition? No, I'm just coming over to say hi to people. But I, I think I was on a rush to a meeting. What else is new? Mm -hmm. I would have hung around to listen to his spiel and then correct if there was anything inaccurate there. Yeah, yeah. But Well, I'm surprised that he went around using this uh, over trying to overcome the uh, vote of the Board of uh, Aldermen who didn't want to support uh, his petition. I know, and I'm wondering if he used the city car or he used his own car. I know that um, his city car had a little bit of damage to it. I was wondering if he got into an accident with it. Oh. And it might have happened when he was going out to get petitions. Sure, sure. So I'm kind of curious. I remember it was a light-colored car he got out of. Um, it was kind of small, compact, I think. Yeah. So I don't know if, if it's the city Nissan that he drives around in. Mm -hmm. Or it's his own car. I don't know if his own car is light colored. But I remember the car sitting on the corner uh -huh. as I was going right on. Oh, let me make the turn across the street. I see. So yeah. he had a little problem. <laughs> I don't know. And you know, I've been kind of asking about it, but nobody seems I, to want to tell you. You know, you brought up the uh, Elm Street School, too, uh, that they have no real plan for uh, keeping a useful of this, uh, of that. Uh, and I think there's a lot of things they could do. Uh, I lived in Chelmsford, Massachusetts for a good time. And the original high school there is now the corporate, uh, I mean, the uh, city's uh, uh, administration area. They just uh, did some modifications of it. First, they turned it into, well, actually, they did turn in one part of it to uh, low-cost housing. Mm -hmm. And there's a, you know, it's a it's, uh, perfect thing for that. And uh, how they've uh, used uh, the money, you're talking about money, for the uh, entertainment area that they're putting up there on uh, uh, where the shoot Alex Schuster is in, is you something know, else. Well, that was not supposed to cost us anything. They were looking for $4 million in donations. And if you ask, you can't get it. So I'm going to put a challenge out to the mayor and Tim Cummings. How much money did you actually raise for the Performing Arts Center, mm -hmm. and what is the cost of it right. to us, we the people, people who did not want it? It was on the ballot as a non-binding referendum, and these non-binding referendums somehow become binding, binding <laughs> that we're going to do it. And this, I asked them when they were doing it, before they tore the building down, because originally they weren't supposed to tear the building down, they were supposed to expand on the building. And I said, what kind of venue are you going to get? You're not going to get a Rod Stewart. You're not going to get an Earth, Wind, and Fire. So you can see what my day and age is from. I said, you're not going to get these people in there. That's going to bring the money to support it. Now we're going to have more employees that's going to have benefits and a nice salary. And this is wrong. Mm -hmm. This was not what was proposed to the people. And I remember with the Broad Street Parkway when I was an alderman. And when back then, um, when designs changed with Mayor Streeter, 
I said it has to be a new referendum on the ballot right. so the people know exactly what we're building. Mm -hmm. And I did, do believe it went on the ballot because he was changing everything with Amherst Street School and it became a nightmare. But now the building got torn down. So right. now you're, you're rebuilding it from scratch. So there's a cost factor in there. Mm -hmm. And then also, I, I said to the mayor at the public hearing, I said, Mayor, you took away all your handicapped parking downtown. <laughs> And I said, I'm not going to sit on this. And I've not been sitting on it. It hasn't heard very much, but I've been going to the appropriate agencies. And the sad thing is, is that you can't do that to people with a disability because people have that right also under ADA reasonable accommodations on some type of parking down there yeah. to get into the, into the eateries or any other um, businesses there to be able to walk and not have the obstacles mm -hmm. and again mayor and i want to tell you mayor and whoever put up those jersey barriers go to andover and take a look what andover did they did those plastic fencings those white ones oh, yeah. they're about maybe half the size mm -hmm. with the posts they look fantastic down there i said to somebody andover look at how classy it is what they did not but you cost a fraction of what it's cost us the people of nashville for these jersey barriers and the painting of it. And they don't stick out in the middle of the road. And they're nice. And they look very attractive. And the businesses, I think, would do better with something like that, with those plastic fences mm. versus the Jersey barriers yeah. that stick sure. out everywhere. So I didn't want to say that Nashua doesn't have class. Nashua does have class. But the Jersey barriers aren't very classy because right. I know some of the people now who are going to see this are going to post this whole thing on Facebook and say, Mrs. Johnson says Nashua doesn't have class. Yes, Nashua has a lot of class. The Jersey barriers just is not just appealing. Feel it just does not appeal to a beautiful downtown. Listen, everybody, a beautiful downtown that we have. We put those Jersey barriers that stick out. You would have been better off with the white fencing, probably gone to Home Depot or Lowe's and purchased it for a quarter of the price. And you can use that to change around and move it That's each right. uh, season. Right, and you don't have to bring in a big fork, uh, fork lift well, right. truck to pick up the Jersey barriers because, you know, you could put it up and they had the base to it. I've got pictures of it uh, on my phone and I, I couldn't help it. I, was I happened to be downtown Andover and I saw it and I said to the people, oh my God, this is so beautiful. It doesn't take up a lot of traffic and it's so classy looking. You know, with the style of Andover. And Andover has a beautiful downtown like yeah. we do. So why aren't we trying to make it beautiful mm -hmm. and attractive? Why are we putting, you know, the Jersey barriers? That's why they call them Jersey barriers for highways, not for downtown, you know. And so you have people who look at your uh, <laughs> Facebook uh, page? I've got a Facebook page. Uh -huh. And it's at Elect Paula Johnson. Ah, well, that's a, that's a novel. <laughs> you know, <laughs> excuse me, I'm not a crazy Facebook person person um i don't like facebook uh -huh. i really get to the point that it's it's crazy out there but um yes it is at elect paula johnson and you know i just want to let the people know um where our city budget keeps going up we need people on the board that's going to be working for the citizens to keep the so that's your major focus uh, for running is, is to make sure that your spending is done appropriately? Taxes and spending, bonding and debt. Look at how we're bonding and how much debt mm -hmm. we have. And I truly believe we need to open communications between the city agencies. Please buy a city hall. And number one, transparency, transparency, transparency between city hall and the citizens of I Nashville. I think that by transparency, you also include uh, politeness and... Uh, recognition for the uh, residents of Nashua? Right. Fiscal response, open community, respect, respect for all. And that's where we're lacking now mm -hmm. in a lot of areas. And it's a top-down thing. And if the mayor can't respect the people that he literally works for, I mean, then you can't expect anybody else to respect. <clears throat> I just want to say to the people, my I will pledge to you to help Nashua taxpayers by controlling and minimizing the city expenses. I did it before. I've gone through budgets. We're getting a lot of federal dollars here. I think we need to justify every federal dollar that comes in. Um, 
just because we get federal dollars and it, people think, oh, it's not citizens' money. It comes from somebody. It just doesn't. It money comes doesn't, from us. So it goes down to Washington, Washington, takes a 20% cut on that, and then hands it back to us. And I just want to let people know, when I was on the board the first time, I had this tree on my desk. And people said, what is it? I said, it's a money tree, because my mother always said money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> so I left it there, and I said, I want to make sure she's right. Money doesn't grow on trees. The tree died, so I guess money didn't grow on trees. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so that's going to be your motto as you're campaigning. I guess money doesn't grow on trees. They take it from us. It, it comes from us up here, goes down to Washington, a big cesspool, right. and then it filters back up. And, and we don't get all of it. And we don't get all of it. Some of it goes someplace else, some other garbage Ex can. <laughs> <laughs> garbage in, garbage out, right? Okay. Do you need any help on uh, getting your voters out? Look for you. Yes, I'm out there with my orange signs. And if anybody would like to um, get in touch with me, you can contact me at um, Facebook, at Paula Johnson, at, now let's get this straight, at Elect Paula Johnson right. on Facebook. Okay, and, that's and the best I've, way to contact you. Best way to contact me, um, or you can, yeah, that would be the best way, because I'm not going to mingle my um, school board no. um, email with anything else. Right. But I would love the help. Um, I'm out there. Um, well, but, you've done a lot on the uh, ele uh, Board of uh, Education. I think that the, you, you awakened a lot of those people. I hope so. The goal is to help these children. Um, we need to see how many have fallen behind, hopefully not a lot, but we need to make sure that if they do fall behind, we get them back to where they need right, to be. Right, right. And uh, also the uh, taxpayers of Nashua, get them back to work, because none of those people really got enough uh, out of this uh, 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 virus problem that we had. No, it, it's a shame. But I just, again, I want to say, they say okay. thank you, Carl, for inviting me on. And please vote for Paula Johnson, um, Board of Alderman, Alderman at Large. I'm number four on the ballot. And if I can get to this quickly, which, oops, I'm, I don't think I'm going to before we, up. Oh, I might just get it, might just get it. This is everybody who we're, who we're working with. Your vote matters. Your vote matters in your polling places. Right. Make sure so. you get somebody who's uh, interested in helping the citizens of Nashua. Yes. Thank you, Paula. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time here. Okay. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.